I'm going to start with a joke, if that's all right. <laughs> hey, guys, I've been keeping account of the prostitutes I've been sleeping with. <laughs> Tally-ho! So that's the first... <laughs> uh, good. It's nice, isn't it? A nice little joke about prostitutes there, sir. <laughs> I'm very uh, immature, a very immature person indeed. Um, my favourite thing to do in the world is to tell my sister stupid made-up shit and just see how long she'll believe that shit for. <laughs> right, the things I've told her in the past, right, I, I told her, for example, I told her that Julius Caesar was king of the salads. <laughs> she believed that. The second one I told her, right, I told my sister that lighthouses were originally built square, but the swirling wind erosion... <laughs> That's outstanding. But the best one I told her, and this is the best thing I've ever told anybody in my entire life, right, I told my sister that Nelson Mandela was the original face of Uncle Ben's. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. That's, I'm really happy with that. But the best thing is, right, my sister is a 32-year-old primary school teacher. <laughs> so all the bullshit I tell her just gets filtered down <laughs> to a new generation of little morons. <laughs> so it's really nice. Uh, I, I feel a bit short-changed in terms of life. Um, I'm very immature, and I feel as though my body, my physical body, is an extension of that immaturity. <laughs> I laugh at that bit. But look at it. This is it. This is it. This is my body. This is what it is. I'm a grown man. This is my lot. It's pathetic. But I'm a grown man. I should be at the peak of my physical powers, you know? Able to, like, I don't know, bench press cars and chase policemen and attack women. But instead... <laughs> But instead, I've just got the sort of arms that most girls would kill for. It's not... <laughs> Look at them, dangling around. <laughs> That's what it's like. These things, the way I walk around, right? I sort of walk these long, willowy limbs <laughs> sort of all around the place. It's like if you can imagine uh, Daddy Longlegs in a breeze. <laughs> That's sort of how I move around. I am skinny. I don't mind being skinny. Uh, it's sort of the only thing with it is, it, it means that I've got to go with sort of curvaceous, voluptuous women. Because if I sleep with a stick-thin girl, we'll start a fire. <laughs> and my sister's like, my sister says to me, oh, Mark, just eat more food. Eat more food, you'll be a normal, human-sized man. <laughs> just eat more food. But the truth is, right, guys, I eat a lot of food. It's just that everything I eat goes straight to my nose. And it's not how it should be. <laughs> it shouldn't, that's bullying if you laugh at that. But that's sort of, it's just a weird thing. The one thing I do like about my physical appearance, um, it's my height. <laughs> Why? Yeah. I like my height. I've got a good, solid height. I like it. It's, uh, I'm about 5'10", 5 5'11". 5 it's not sort of freakishly tall. Certainly not sarcastically short, is it? <laughs> it's, uh, it's a nice height, a good height, for example, if you're a spy. You're sort of walking around, being a spy, 5'10". No one suspects the 5'10 man is a spy. Obviously, quite a shit spy, cos I've uh, given it away. <laughs> uh, unless, uh, unless that's the ruse. But I don't get why women seem to like tall men. Now, women of Earth, do you like tall men? Yes! Yeah, straight in there as well. <laughs> yes, I like them. Do you like rugby players? Yes! You were instant there. It could have been, do you like any man? Yes, I do. <laughs> but to me, like, rugby players are just sort of large slabs of beef with their nose spread across their face, <laughs> walking around the place. I don't really get it, and I was thinking about this for a long time. I was thinking very deeply about this. I was thinking, what is it that women like about rugby players? And I came up with it. I know what it is now. Don't shake your head. I know what it is. It's all right. <laughs> so if you think about it, right, subconsciously and deeply, it's been someone sculpted over millions of years, thousands of decades. It's come to fruition. So if you think about it, right, subconsciously, rugby players play the game of rugby with the ball the shape of an egg. <laughs> Bear with me. And women lay eggs. <laughs> or, some, or something. That's right, I'm not an idiot. I know it works. Got stu the sperm goes up. Sperm goes up. Gobbles the egg. Baby, done. <laughs> I know how it works. It's not... Despite this lack of knowledge about women, right, I took one on a woman on a... <laughs> I took, one, I took one on a date, <laughs> a woman on a date, and it was lovely. We had this sort of lovely picnic in this lovely field. <laughs> and we sat in the shade of this big oak tree, and this oak tree was lovely, but I noticed on the oak tree there were three messages carved 
into the tree's bark. And the first message carved into the bark said, Reese, Hart, Sarah. Under that, a second message carved into the tree's bark. This one said, Annabelle forever. And under that, a third message carved into the tree. It said, Jonathan, you are my everything. And I thought, ah, oh, a lot of people take weapons on dates. <laughs> Uh, my name is Mark Smith, don't know if you noticed. Um, <laughs> it, I hate it, it's a shit name. <laughs> it? It's a horrible name, it's such a terrible name. Uh, the thing is, I, I wish I had a nickname. Like, Mark Smith's a terrible name. Like, in fact, my, my worst nightmare, right, would be to be in a room with my terrible monosyllabic name written all over the walls. <laughs> <laughs> I went on holiday uh, a few years ago, and I met a man on holiday who was travelling through. He was on, like, a gap year star thing. And he... <laughs> This is horrible, right? He introduced himself. His given name, his chosen name, was Captain... <laughs> Pussy. <laughs> Smasher. <laughs> Just let that float around your mind for a minute. He introduced himself to me as Captain Pussy Smasher. He did this to women he met. This is what he did. It was, I've got three problems with that as a name. I've got more than three. But I'll mention three. First one, he's got the word pussy in his name. As a start-off point, don't have pussy in your name. Have no genitals if you can help it. Have, have nothing. Second one, he uses the word smash. Such a sexually aggressive, horrible word to use. Like, it's not a piece of glass, is it? It's a little bit of flesh. It's nice. I'm really sorry about this, parents. <laughs> The third problem I've got is that he has elevated himself, in his name, to the role of captain. <laughs> I don't know how this came about, I don't know how he got promoted through the ranks of the Navy. <laughs> he started off as sort of cabin boy pussy smasher. <laughs> Maybe heading towards that glorious Admiral pussy smasher role. <laughs> it's just such a weird thing, I don't want to be on his ship. I don't want to be there, I'm getting off board immediately. And the weird thing is, right, that he, in nine months of travelling, you're thinking, well, how many girls did this incredible Lothario manage to seduce? One girl. <laughs> the Captain Pussy Smasher. But I'm more amazed that a girl went for that. Like, how did that come about? Was it like, oh, hello, nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. What's your name? It's Libby. What's your name? Captain Pussy Smasher. <laughs> Any single men in here tonight? So I'm not hitting on you, don't worry. <laughs> Maybe one or two of you. Uh, <laughs> any single men, right, I've got a little idea for you, a little, uh, little prank you can play, a little sort of trick you can play on people. It's quite a lot of fun. I did it quite recently. I was out in the town of Leeds, which is a city, and I went out. <laughs> I thought, I'll play a little prank on a girl. So before I went to the bar, I got a normal standard playing card, and I wrote the word no on the back of it. And that night, I scuttled off into Leeds, the town. <laughs> and I went up to a girl at the bar. She was quite a pretty-looking girl, but quite sort of snobby, sort of snotty, made in Chelsea, fucking awful piece of shit, made in Chelsea, snobby, <laughs> snotty, piece of shit, fucking awful piece of bitch. <laughs> and I went out to her and I said, um, hello, would you like to see a magic trick? And she went, <laughs> no. And I went, <laughs> weird. Try it. If you're single, try it. It'll get you nowhere. <laughs> I'm a very impulsive person. Like, very, very impulsive as a person. A very impulsive buyer. I'll give you an example of what I mean. I will buy any old shit as long as it's near the front of a queue. <laughs> right, so it could be like the front of W.H. Smith with, like, a stack of magazines, and I'll say, Oh, sir, do you want this chocolate bar the size of a large dog <laughs> for four quid? And I'll be like... Of course I do. What, <laughs> what do you mean by that? Is this a, what? <laughs> it could be anything. It could be like uh, the front of HMV with a stack of CDs. And it might be like, oh, sir, do you want this sachet of piss for a tenner? <laughs> and I'll be like, is that a trick question? <laughs> what, of course... Stop fucking me around and bag it up. <laughs> and I get it off my dad. My dad's got this really beautiful, youthful sense of impulsiveness. 
And it's led him over the years to buying all sorts of shit we don't want or need in our house, right? But it's quite fun. So in the 80s, we had the soda stream maker. Uh, in the 90s, we had the foot massage bubble bath <laughs> nonsense. Uh, recently, we had the Michael Bublé CD. Shit you don't need or want <laughs> in your house. No, I'm only joking. I like Bublé. I'm only joking again. Double switch. I don't like it. <laughs> and I went home to see him. I went home to Derby to see my dad. Uh, and I knew he'd bought something rashly and impulsively because he had a look on his face. And the look on his face was one of... Son, I've been pissing away your inheritance. <laughs> I said to him, all right, Dad, all right, bozo, what have you bought? And he said to me, Mark, I've just purchased 75 body bags. <laughs> Not a body bag is, right? Yeah, yeah. It's horrible, isn't it? The actual term, for the, the actual phrase for the body bag itself, as it says on the outside of the bag, is human remains pouch. <laughs> Which is horrible, because that sounds microwavable. Don't, <laughs> don't call it that. And my initial reaction to him buying 75 body bags was to say, well, why the fuck have you bought 75 body bags? His response was, so the question was with the 75 body bags primarily used for storing corpses, his response was, just in case. <laughs> just in case what? <laughs> what is he plotting? I don't know how many people my dad is plotting to kill, right? But 75 seems like quite an optimistic number for a man with a bad back like his. <laughs> then I thought, no, hang on, maybe no, maybe it's not. Maybe it's not that, but maybe just in case isn't really a satisfactory answer still, is it? It's not satisfactory to the question why we bought 75 body bags. Just in case is fine if the question is, oh, dad, what's with all the suntan cream? Just in case. Or, hey, dad, what's with all the condoms? Just in case. <laughs> Uh, maybe, not, maybe not condoms, that's a... <laughs> sorry, that's a bad thing, to, I don't want to think about that. That's... <laughs> sorry, guys. That's a horrible... I can't think about it now, it's horrible. Um, no, I don't want to think about that. <laughs> that's... Uh, sorry, it's just... The thing is, well, I, I'd like to think that my dad's only ever had sex twice in his life. OK, like, once for my gullible sister, and then, you know, once for me, you know? And then the rest of the time, he just wanks on my mum's tits. <laughs> That's what I like to think. <laughs> We're finished, we sorry about that. Uh, then I thought, hang on, maybe my dad's got genuine reasons for having these body bags. And I can imagine him now, sort of with his seven-foot-wide leather black body bag, just sort of striding up and down the aisle at Tesco's. Striding, waving to people, nodding at them, striding around with this massive body bag, piling wave after wave and shelf after shelf of shit he doesn't need into the bag. Baguettes, yoghurt, crisps, raisins, fruit, sultanas, eggs, bacon, chips, beans, DVDs, magazines. He gets to the front of the queue, the cashier says to him, have you got a bag for life? He goes... <laughs> sort of. Uh, I'm not the most immature person I know. Uh, that accolade goes to a man called Kelvin. Probably the most immature person I've ever met. Um, I can't really call him a friend because he's quite racist. Ooh. <laughs> Any racists in here tonight? Put your hands up. <laughs> Good, no one in. Good. <laughs> and he's got this phrase. You might have heard this phrase. Hopefully you haven't. But the phrase goes like this. The phrase goes, there ain't no black in the Union Jack. Have you heard this as a phrase? This is fucking ludicrous, right? That's the phrase, there ain't no black in the Union Jack. And what that phrase means is, there's no black colour in the Union flag. So why are there black people in the country? What a phrase. I said to Kelvin, Kelvin, that's not how flags work. <laughs> if you look around, like we're in Britain, if you look around, there's no one here that is the colour of brilliant white. <laughs> is that? There's not that. If you look around further, there's no one here that is genuinely the colour of red. Is there? And apart from the contents of my dad's body bags, <laughs> very little blue. <laughs> uh, you've been really lovely. Um, you've been really nice. Thanks for having me. Um, have you enjoyed it? <laughs>